What's going on engineers? In this video we're going to be looking at how to design and create tables in MySQL. The design part of what we're going to be talking about is going to be related to like data types and modifiers of columns, primary keys, indexes, and those sorts of things. The actual creating table part is the actual syntax that you have to write to actually create that table. Now I don't intend this video to be a comprehensive description of everything that you can do with creating a table in MySQL, but I do find myself doing the same things over and over again when I create tables in MySQL. So this is gonna be a video on basically the things that I do over and over again, and that you'll probably do over and over again over the course of your career. So let's go ahead and jump in and have a look at some of the data types. So these are probably the most common MySQL data types that you're gonna use, and they're broken up into roughly three categories, numeric, string-based, and then dates and times. The three most common whole number types is tiny int, int, and big int, and they really only differ in two ways. The first is the range of values that they can store, and the second is the amount of storage necessary to store one of these integers. And it's that storage piece that's very important. This is why MySQL gives you a bunch of options for integer types is because if you have an integer field in your table and you know that the range of values might all only be like 0 to 10, then you wouldn't want to store that as a big int because you're going to incur about 7 bytes of wasted space on every single row of data that you have. For decimal numbers, I like to use the decimal data type as opposed to the float data type. The reason I like decimal is because I'm able to specify up front what the actual precision and size of the number will be. And oftentimes for the use cases that I have, that's what's best. You know, like if you want to store a bank balance, of course, you know that there's only two points at the end of that. That said, if you're building tables to hold data, which will later be used for scientific calculations, then you may actually want to look at the float data type. The next three types relate to storing actual strings of characters, and a variable length string works a little differently than text, and I'll explain about that in a second. So for variable length string, you have to specify the size up front. However, it will only cost you the storage of what you actually have stored there. So you might be asking yourself, well, why can't I just tell it to just store as much as I need? And the answer is because MySQL has maximum row lengths and this will contribute to that max length so you can only set it as high as it would be before you would exceed the max row length and this is thus why text and medium text and also long text exist the difference with text data types is instead of storing the actual text in the row what it does is it stores a pointer reference to the text which exists somewhere else and in this way, like for instance in the case of a medium text, you can store 16 megabytes of text elsewhere without contributing to the actual row size. And the last three are date and time related, and they're date, time, and date time. And date is going to be a date in the format of year-month-day. Time is going to be a time in the format of hour, colon, minute, colon, second. And then date time is just the date and the time put together separated by a single space. So in addition to data tips, we're also going to talk about column attributes, and then we're going to talk about primary keys and indexes, but we won't do it now. We're actually going to jump in now to the actual creation of the table, and then as we start layering in these fields and these attributes, we'll talk about what each one does and how you can use them. So I have a new file here called table.sql. Now you might notice that we're going to be building this table using actual syntax from scratch, we're not going to be using any kind of GUI to do this. There are, of course, programs you can use like MySQL Workbench, phpMyAdmin, those sorts of things to author and modify tables through a GUI, but we are not going to do that here. So our goal here is to create a table that uses all of those data types, plus adds a primary key and some indexes. So to create a table in MySQL, you start by using the create table syntax and you specify the table name and then parentheses. Inside the parentheses is where the table definition is going to be. This is where you're going to establish all of, your, all of your fields, as well as your primary key and your indexes, and eventually foreign key constraints and things like that, although we won't talk about those in this video. So generally speaking, the format for a field is going to be field name, field type, and then attributes. The first field in a table is commonly a very large auto-incrementing integer type, such as an ID. So we're going to do ID, which is going to be the name, and then we'll do big int as the type. Now here we're going to use our very first attribute, and for big int we're going to use the attribute unsigned. And what this says is that this big int should not go into the negative. It should store the number 0 all the way up to big int max. The second attribute will be something called not null, and this says that this field should not be null. And the last attribute will be the auto increment attribute, which is auto underscore increment. And what this will tell it is that every time we insert a new record into this table, go ahead and increase the ID by one and insert that as the value. So basically the first row you insert, it'll be a one, the second time it'll be a two, a three, and so on. 
One thing auto increment will do for you is that it won't reuse numbers if you delete records. And this is good because this gives each row a unique ID. So if you insert 10 records and you have IDs one through 10, if you're to delete numbers six and seven, the next one you insert will still be 11. It's not gonna go back and reuse that six and seven. So the next field we'll create is one that uses tiny int. So we'll create something like a status field. You know, maybe status only has like six or seven statuses. So you know it's a, it's a small number. So you can do status. The type is going to be tiny int. Here again, it's gonna be unsigned. That's because there will never be like a negative one status. And then for this one, we'll use not null again. And then we'll use a brand new attribute here called default. And what you can do is you can actually tell MySQL that when you insert a record into this table, if you haven't supplied a value for status, then you can simply default it to say two. Next one we'll do is a slightly larger number. Maybe we'll call it things like events. Maybe you wanna store like how many events a certain thing had. So in this case, you would do int. And then here again, unsigned, and then not null. And then because the events you would want to start at zero, you can simply do default zero. The next two we'll do, we'll use the decimal data type. And one classic use for a decimal type is going to be latitude and longitude. So the first one will be, you know, the field name will be latitude. And then we'll do decimal. Now the syntax for decimal is you have to specify numbers here. And I'm going to specify 10 comma 8. And basically what this says is, is that our max number size will be 10 digits of which eight are to the right of the decimal point. Now, instead of not null here, we're actually just gonna type null. And that's gonna say that this field can be nulled. And that's because maybe latitude is an optional field. And when you insert it, you won't have a value. In this case, it'll just insert a null. It's probably worth mentioning that null is actually the default. We're just putting it here for explanation just to be explicit so you know that this is a nullable field. Of course, if we have latitude, we also need longitude. So I'll just copy that here, longitude. Now longitude stores negative 180 to 180, so we actually need an extra digit here. So next we'll get into string types. Perhaps you wanna store something like just a person's name. So you can do name, you can do variable character. Now in here you specify the max size would be. So you gotta pick a sensible size. If you know the person's name would never exceed something like 50 characters, then you can insert 50 here. And because I want the name to always have a value, I'll do not null, that way it's never gonna be null. We'll insert a second variable character string here and we'll call it something like description. And then instead of 50, we'll say this is a maximum of 128 characters, also not null, but what we do is we want a default value and we want to default it to blank string or perhaps even NA. So what this will do is this will insert NA into this field if nothing was supplied for it. Next will just be a simple text field. Maybe you wanna store a bio. So you can do bio, text, and then you can say that this field can be nulled. And then finally we'll move on to our dates and our times. So perhaps you wanna store like a birthday. So you can do birthday and you specify the type as date and you can specify it as null if you want. For the time, maybe you wanna store like event time, you know, as type time, also null. And then for date time, perhaps you wanna store when this record was created. So we could do something like created at date time and because we'll make this required we can do not null so that's the entirety of the fields that we wanted to create the things that come after this are going to be related to the primary key and the indexes so we have to select a primary key here and our obvious choice is going to be the field called id now primary keys they have to be unique and they must be not null to tell mysql which is your primary key simply do primary key and parentheses specify the name of the field you want to be the primary key now it's worth mentioning that when I say must be unique, I'm saying that the database will enforce that. So if you insert a record into this table with an ID of one, it will accept it. If you insert another record into the table with an ID of one, it will actually reject it. It won't even insert that record. Also, when you select a field to be a primary key, you're also creating an index for that field. The role indexes play in a table is that you can index certain fields, which will increase the performance when you're trying to query on those particular fields. So if you have a table here and you know you're going to be, say, querying on status all the time, it would make sense to index status. So to do that, you simply do key, and then you do the key name, which can be the same name as the field. So key status, and then in parentheses, you do status. Now indexes can be made up of more than one field. It doesn't necessarily just have to be one. So if you know that you need to query on a particular field, and then you know that you're gonna query on a second field from the resulting set, then you can use what's called a composite index. So if we wanna query on birthday and event time, then we can do something like key birthday time. 
And then in here we could say birthday and then event time. And this will create us an index that makes up both of those. This would make queries such as those that would say, give me all the records where birthday is a specific date and then event time is between a range of dates. That particular index would make that query very fast. Indexes are extremely important because without indexes, MySQL has to do what's called a full table scan. And this is the equivalent of me giving you a 500 page book and saying, tell me how many times the word dog appears. Of course, the only way you could possibly do that would be to start on page one, read all the text, and list how many times dog appears, then go to page two and do that 499 more times. If you had indexes, it's the equivalent of me giving you the same 500 page book, but there's already bookmarks on every page that contains the word dog. So you might be asking yourself, well, if indexes increase performance, why not just index every single field in our table? And the reason is because, like most things, indexes come with a trade-off, and it's three primary things. The first is that indexes occupy permanent space on disk, temporary space in memory, and then it also slows down your write throughput, because each time you insert a new record to this table, it has to update the indexes. That's why tons of indexes on a very large table with a lot of fields can really cripple your write speed. So that's all for table definition. The last thing we're gonna look at is a couple table options and those occur outside of the parentheses. So the first common one is gonna be the engine. Now in 2020, the year this video was produced, the only real sensible option here and the one you're gonna use 99.9% .9 of the time is going to be an engine called InnoDB. The other engine you're likely to come across is something called MyISAM. It used to be really popular back in the day because it had really fast read speeds, but it came at a cost. It didn't support things like transactions, row level locking, and some real good data consistency checks to make it more durable to data corruption. As of the time of this recording, I think the latest MySQL version is MySQL 8, and they do still support MyISAM, but you are not gonna wanna use it. The only time you're gonna wanna use MyISAM is if you have to support legacy software that actually depends on certain features of MyISAM. Outside of that, just don't use it. And the last thing is going to be, just real quick, our character sets and collations. We're going to use UTF-8 and UTF-8 Unicode CI. There's lots of different collations that you can use and character sets, but these are probably good sensible defaults unless you have a specific use case to use something otherwise. And that's it for our table. To actually insert this into MySQL, simply just copy the whole thing, paste it into your MySQL terminal, and that's it. If everything worked well, you'll see query OK. Otherwise, you'll see an error here. And then you can actually check to make sure everything looks good by doing describe my underscore table. And then you can actually get a look as to all the fields and their types, and then whether they're nullable, whether they have indexes, and then their defaults and any extra attributes. The last thing I wanna talk about is this parentheses 10 on the end of the int. You'll notice that when we created the table, we didn't actually supply a 10 here. Now there's a common misconception that this 10 actually means the maximum amount of data that can be stored in that integer. So a lot of times people think that like an int two can only store values from zero to 99. That is 100% completely false. That's not at all what it means. Whether you have int one or int 10, it's always gonna be able to store a 32-bit integer. The only thing this number in the parentheses means is something called display width. And it only has something to do with when you want to zero fill or zero pad a number. So if you have int 10 and you zero fill that field and say the, the column has a, a one in it, what you'd get is you'd get nine zeros and then a one. Of course, if the number was say 88, you would get eight zeros and then 88. Anyway, I only mention it because I've met senior guys that have 10 years experience that still think that that number means the range of values they can store. And we're done. This is pretty much the most common things that you'll see when you are designing and creating a table in MySQL. And just to reiterate, I can't stress this enough, make sure that you know how to create a table from scratch. You know, of course there are GUIs out there, MySQL Workbench and so on, which will create all these for you, but oftentimes those hide some of the details about creating a table. By doing it yourself and writing the actual create table syntax, you really learn exactly how everything's work. If you can already do it this way and you just want to use a GUI just for convenience sake, then by all means do that. If you have any questions or comments about anything you saw in this video, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. Other right, than that, I hope everybody learned something and I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.